Greetings and welcome to episode 61, October 3rd, 2023, Chronicles of a Nonprofit. I am so grateful that we're here. I see 37 people in the chat. This is a good, good day. The podcast is going to be laid back. I I really don't have a topic today, so I was going to get on just to connect and, of course, everyone shows up. (laughs) So I would like to send a shout out, a happy birthday to my wonderful grandson, um, Javier, and may you have a blessed, wonderful, wonderful birthday. And um, so we're going to get right in. How's everybody doing? Let's dive deep with our entrepreneurial experience. Firstly, I want to thank all of my shining entrepreneurs for believing in themselves and knowing that you have the potential, whether you are running a small business, whether you are going to do something with your life and set a goal, or if you are just doing the basic everyday living process, you are shining. If you're getting up and taking a shower and eating your breakfast and taking a healthier choice to eat, uh, If you are setting goals and working on your finances, you're doing awesome. So, yes, welcome. (laughs) All right, Joshua, it's good to see you today. I'm glad you are here. Um, We will be doing our monthly check-in, so we got to get that situated as well. So, how's everybody doing? How is everyone? Okay. Okay, Mr. Ramir. Yes, how are you? Oh, you have a question. Okay. <laughs> All right. I will let Okay, Kennedy, I'll let him know you said happy birthday. Thank you. So are we setting those goals? Are we setting the goals that are strategically planned in our lives based on what we already do with our lives? Are we setting the goals in our journals? Because that's something that is vital. It's a how-to to to build yourself. And if you don't do it today, when you write in your journal the next day, tell yourself, I didn't do it. I didn't get around to it. You know, I got distracted. Something happened, okay? And then what you do is you promise yourself. You make another promise to yourself. And making those promises to the goals that we set, it comes in time. It's just like when I quit smoking. The first thing I did was I kept the cigarette on the dashboard of my vehicle. I know that was very, very risky. However, I just did. And the goal was to keep that cigarette there as long as I possibly could. And if it was one day, if it was a week, if it was a month, that was my goal. The next day was my goal. And so then it became easier as I watched it because I knew that the self-gratification was immediately there. All I had to do was pick it up. Um... I know that we're not supposed to do that, but me being oppositionally defiant, I chose to do it that way, and it works. Now, I'm not saying it'll work for everyone. I am saying that you have to give yourself options. You have to believe in yourself, and you have to believe in the process that you want to create for your life. All right, Danessa, nice that nice to see you. Glad you're here. Yes, yes, those are those are things that motivate us, inspire us. And yes, it may be scary because we probably will pick it up the very first time we think about it. But if we give it five minutes and say, okay, I just thought about cigarette smoking. I'm going to give it five minutes, and in that five minutes, if I still feel the urge, I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to smoke my cigarette. 
And so what that does is it builds a stamina. It builds a regression, if you will, to prevent you from going back. Because if you can wait five minutes, now you can wait five more minutes and you continue to extend that goal set. So it can be a week. You say, uh, one day, okay, I'm going to leave that cigarette there. And if I want it, I'll smoke it tomorrow. Then tomorrow becomes a week. And then a week becomes two weeks. And then two weeks, beca- you know, incremental, incremental. All right. Okay, Joshua, (laughs) the question you have. Okay. As I watch you grow here at Chronicles of a Nonprofit, I recognize a few areas that I would like to empower myself and refine. How do you keep up the stamina to do your work? I've been business developing and been a part of organized thinking since I can remember, since I was young. Every Saturday, we had to get up. We had to clean the house before we could go shopping. And then everyone was given a certain amount of money to shop. So we would go out to the mall and I would hit the sales racks so to get more items. So my theory is, Organize your day, prepare, and always keep yourself ready. So my side of the room was always organized. I would make my bed every morning. I would sweep under my bed every day. So by the time Saturday hits, I'm ready to rock and roll. I'm cool. I can go watch my little cartoons or whatever was on the TV at the time And then, or I could listen to my music on the record player. So that was phenomenally the way that I handled my things. Friday night, I'm, you know, Ajax in the bathtub. I'm I'm cleaning out the sink. I'm sweeping around the toilet or whatever I got to do. If I'm in the kitchen, I got kitchen duty. I'm, I'm handling that. I'm you know, pulling old meat out of the freezer, reorganizing it. And I am putting new, you know, the newer meats in the back so we can, you know, keep the organization of the house together because that was what my mom required and my grandmother. So in that, I chose to handle my business before the day was even there. I don't know if you call it, you know, just greater preparation or whatever it was. Um, I didn't like cleaning the basement, but sometimes I had to when my brother was at work. So when I had those days, I would wait until Saturday morning to do it because I wanted it to be daylight. I wanted it to be, you know, and then everyone had to approve it. My mother and my grandmother both had to approve it. So if it wasn't done up to standard and up to code, then I had to go back and do it again. So with that, excuse me, um, allergies, oh my goodness. Um, so with that, oh, I have my de- my humidifier on too, so you might hear that. Please excuse the humming, but I need it. Um, so anyway, how do I stay focused and committed on the goal setting um, to do the work that I do? I pace myself. At one point in time, I would actually write in a journal what I was going to do the next day. Uh, now I'm at that point where I will schedule something if I know that I have to do something specific, like if I have a schedule planned or if I have a meeting to attend, I'm going to put that in my Google um, calendar. I'm going to do that. But on the flip side, if it's something exciting, Um, I'm just going to remember, I'm going to remember, and I'm just going to be there because I show up every day. Even if I don't have anything to do, I still show up, Joshua. So I make it a, a random practice. Is that even, even, is that even a reality? A random practice? No, I make that a continuous conscious practice to build my 
understanding of what I am and what I do. Okay? So I hope that answers the question. I think that I am just a very organized thinker. I taught my children how to be organized like that. Um, My grandchildren, they know. So that's how I structure my life. And to build the stamina, again, it's just like with the cigarette example. I will hold it there for the time being. And when I no longer need it, I throw it away. That was the most profound day in my life. When I threw away the cigarette, I no longer needed it to be on the dashboard. I no longer needed the... uh, I guess it was self-gratification. The just knowing it was available. So what are some of your practices, entrepreneurs, my shining entrepreneurs? What are your practices in order to build your stamina, in order to help you get through, you know, a goal set? Okay, Fantasia, writing it down. Oh, I like that. I like that, Carl. Sitting on it and making it believable. That means you have to commit. You have to truly commit to the the respect that this is what you're going to set out to do. Yeah, because you can sit there and write a whole compilation of things that you're going to do, Carl. And before you know it, you get nothing done because that's not what you were really and truly going to do, huh? (laughs) Yes, yes, yes. Excuse me. All right. What's some other um, examples that you can use to set the goal and keep the stamina Get up every morning, make your breakfast, get it prepared the night before so that you're ready for whatever it is you're going to do. So if you have a 10 o'clock appointment, you already have your breakfast up and, you know, prepared and ready for you. Setting your clothes out. Yes, I remember those days when I would set my clothes out. And I'm the type of, of dresser. Well, not now, because a lot of times I'm on job sites, working with my maintenance crew. But um, there were times, entrepreneurs, where I literally would only dress in two colors. If I'm doing red and blue, I'm doing red and blue. And everything is red and blue, from red sock, blue sock. (laughs) Blue shoe, red shoe. I mean, um, everything was balanced. Blue pants, red shirt. Red pants, blue shirt, you know what I mean? (laughs) Ribbons, you know, clips in the hair, makeup color. I mean, it was just, yeah, I was that festive. (laughs) If I'm doing pumpkin and and, and black, I'm doing pumpkin and black. That's just the color. Yeah, I didn't go out there. (laughs) So being creative and the way you're going to dress and making sure that you're ready and prepared for the next day. That's exactly the key to setting the goals. Mm Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. Let me see here. At what point do you say enough is enough? Oh, my. When we're setting a goal, the very first thing I say, Kiara, is that enough is enough when I no longer have the power, when I've given it my all and I no longer have the power to face whatever else is done. There were times when I was in college and I was doing essays and dissertations and theses, I would start an idea and I'm hype about it. And now I'm, you know, starting my whole, you know, Uh, supporting topic, and then the next thing, I'm blank. I have no more ideas. I have no more, you know, suggestions to give. 
And as long as I've done my best, my ultimate best, sometimes I give myself a half hour, 15 minutes, 45 minutes, something like that. When I've given myself the ultimate best that I have, it's okay if I say, okay, I'm stopping right here. Enough is enough. Because what happens is if I know that my paper is due on a Sunday, I'm going to, again, just like when I was a young girl, I'm going to prepare my journey to start my process immediately at that point. I'm not going to wait the day of. I'm not a crammer. So I'm not going to wait a day of. I'm going to start working as soon as the assignment is given. I'm going to start working that particular day because nine times out of ten, assignments are always given kind of weeks in advance, especially if you have a syllabus. If you're in college and you're going for your degrees or certification, they're going to tell you the deadline due date for all the documentation must be submitted by. So you take that date and divide it by the time you have remaining and you can say, I will commit two hours every session to this particular goal and actually set it and make the, make the mark. You can make the mark um, and, it, and it will be perfect. That mark will be specific to what you're striving to get to. Setting the mark and setting the tone to create the destiny for your legacy in a business, in, in business proposal writing, in business development, uh, all that is significant. So yeah, enough is enough when we finally say that this is what's happening. Mm -hmm. And then finally, the next question here is, How do you use your energy to be professional when it comes down to working with others? So professionalism is always on the forefront of my mind. I'm always at that point where I start off with the continuum. And I say to myself, this is where I'm at with everyone. So if I am there with everyone, no one gets carte blanche. No one gets um, exceptional um experience with me everyone gets the same whether you're coming back a second time whether you're coming back a fifth time whether you're coming back a f the first well whether you are there the first time so a lot of times if I'm continually there and I'm continually motivating myself and I'm moving into the creative areas of life that is the process so I stay professional in that way. Um, we do have a caller uh, that just called in. I'm going to, let me see, um, try to get, get back to them. But, uh, yeah, they may not know that they're going to be on air. So <laughs> I need to make sure that they're on. Um, however, let me see. I think this time frame is pretty pretty lengthy enough so basically to to make a long story short today's session um is very unique it's very just an open branded conversation on how to commit to goal setting and and i gave a few examples of how the goal setting really and truly works in real time because it worked for me I stopped smoking cold turkey, <laughs> no type of, I mean, I, mean, I did do uh, years before I started this like smoking cessation hypnosis. I did that, but I don't know. I think it possibly planted the seed. So that helped as well. So there's always, we're always going to be on that journey to success right when we are validating the change. So just remember that and take your time. The practice you can take as long as you want to heal your traumatic practices, things that 
has always baffled you as to even why you chose to do something to pick up in the first place, whether it's hardcore, you know, uh, hardcore things or just simple things like eating chocolate, you know, or, you know, anything of excess. And working on that is the basic functions of healing the trauma that that processed the idea that this is valuable to do. And then once you have control over that, you've healed it. You've motivated yourself to heal it. And in that healing, you find restoration, you find self-confidence, you find the motivation to keep it going. So (laughs) thank you for being here and thank you for being part of the chat. I, I really appreciate everyone for showing up. This is a great podcast. I love these private podcast videos that I can extend out over to YouTube and and I'm going to be getting on Patreon as well when I build up my client base on this platform we're going to move on over to Patreon and then we're going to have deeper conversations more more relevant conversations and speak specifically to individuals in actual business course okay so you're going to hear the real deal I kind of was going to do it today but I believe in confidentiality so I don't know why the individual called but we're going to go get on that call right now. God bless you all. As always, shining entrepreneurs, be consistent, be on time, and be the best person walking in your shoes today and know that you are all that. God bless, and we'll see you next time.